Right here, folks. I owed you guys a, an explanation on number 10 from the homework yesterday. I did figure it out, and I was doing something wrong. I want to make sure that we talk about here. No. One. Maybe. Come on. So Ooh, that's the only part I'm having trouble on, and I really need to know if it's right. You won't help me. You're going to hurt my feelings. You're going to hurt my feelings. No, I don't want to do that. We're starting a be nice chapter here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it's like yeah, it's like the modest for me. It's our club. We're all going to sell your. No, I think that's dope. No, listen. I really want to know what. what? Everyone's about to snowflakes. You know it. Are you a big artist? I mean, I'm a regular sized artist, I guess. All right. Can I? Can we refocus here, please? So I did. I did owe you guys an explanation on number ten, and here's the here's what we should have been doing. We should have been making three vectors instead of two. Okay. So let me show you where the three are. So this is the vector C for the crate. The crate is being acted on by gravity straight down. Uh, let's say that this is vector R for the ramp at 29 degrees. And then we have vector P for the pole, which is at, um, oops, this one is the 29 and that one's the 22, excuse me. <clears throat> Everybody okay there? All right. I know that the magnitude of C is going to equal 80. I know the magnitude of P is 130. What do you think the magnitude of R is? Is it given to us anywhere? Guess what we get to do then? Get to pick it to be 1. Which is even better, right? So, I can then resolve vector C into the vector 0, negative 80. I can resolve vector P into the vector 130, cosine 29, comma 130, sine 29. And I can resolve vector r then into the vector cosine 22, comma, sine 22. Everybody OK there. Notice that we want the amount of force directed into the ramp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to take the projection of vector C onto the ramp, and I'm going to need the projection of vector P oops, into the ramp. What's the nice thing about either one of these two vector projections?
Well, this is C dot R over the magnitude of R squared times R. All right? This is P dot R over the magnitude of R squared times R. So remember that um, the magnitude of R squared is just 1. And if we want the magnitude of these things, which is what we're actually asking for, I can do this, right? Now notice that C dot R and P dot R are scalars, they're not vectors. So I can pull those out. And we know the magnitude of R is 1. So I'm left with just C dot R and P dot R. So that's not so bad. So C dot R is going to be 0 plus negative 80 times sine of 22. And oops, that's supposed to be a P. P dot R is 130 cosine 29 times cosine 22 plus 130 sine 29 times sine 22. And when I fire up my calculator then, Is this going? Where are we going? Not ah, there we are. So negative eight, oops, negative eight times sine twenty-two gives me negative two point nine nine. Oops, let's call it negative three point zero. And then I have one thirty cosine 29 times uh, cosine 22 plus 130 sine 29 times sine 22. That gives me 129. Everybody's okay to hear. Double check something really quick. Oh, great googly moogly. Look what I did here. What should this be? Negative 80. It's like something was up there. It's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There we go. Okay. Everybody's okay to hear. 
So then if I just add these two projections, that should be, oops, that should be my final result. Ninety nine oh six. That's was my mistake. I was trying to combine the two vectors into one initially, and that was where I was getting off kiltered. I was trying to put the crate already projected onto the ramp. I should have treated them as three separate vectors instead of combining those two. Does it make sense that this vector is negative and this vector is positive? Yeah, so the so the projection of the crate onto the ramp, the crate is acting gravity pulling it down the ramp, right? If we set the crate on the ramp, we'd expect it to slide down, correct? So it makes sense that's applying a negative force, and the vector, the other vector is pulling up on the crate. That should give me a positive force. And because we're pulling up much harder than the gravity is pulling down, right? It's almost twice as much. 130 pounds pulling up versus 80 pounds pulling down. It should be net force going up, right? We'd expect that crate to end up going upward. So there's the idea there for this one. So again, what you had to do is you had to treat this as three separate vectors. Find the projection, two projections, both onto the crate, the nice, or I'm sorry, both onto the ramp, the crate onto the ramp, and the pull onto the ramp. The nice part about both of those is because they're projecting onto the ramp, all you really need is the dot product of the two vectors to get the magnitude. Remember that shortcut we talked about yesterday? If the magnitude of the vector you're projecting onto is one, the magnitude of the projection onto that vector, just the dot product of the two vectors. That's what we saw here, that this simplified down into just a dot product, the magnitude of these projections, which is really nice. And then you just have to add the two magnitudes. Everybody okay there? Um, so I also had asked you guys to look at the review from last night, or the review for this chapter. That didn't embed right, did it? That's interesting. Okay. Strange. All right, whatever. Uh, should we talk about any of the problems from this? You tell me what you want me to do, and I'll be happy to do it. From number one? Question 1F? Okay. That's okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by converting this linear combination form into component form. So that's just the component negative 2, 4. So I have 8, negative 1, 
plus 2 times negative 2 comma 4 minus 3 times 4 negative 5. So that's just going to be 8 plus 2 times negative 2 minus 3 times positive 4. Negative 1 plus 2 times 4 minus 3 times negative 5. Or 8 minus 4 minus 12, that's negative 8. And then negative 1 plus 8 plus 15 is uh, 22, I think. Is that okay, Caitlin? Is that what you got when you did it? Good. What's next? Gisela? Which one are you at looking at here? So vector U here is three one, right? Because I go three units here and then one unit up. Agree with that? So what's vector V gonna be? I go one unit to left and then one, two, three, four. Uh yeah. So negative one, four. So if I graph this, if I want to do u plus 2v, so u is 1, 2, 3, and then 1. So there's u. And then 2v is going to be 1 to left, and then 1, 2, 3, 4 up. So that's a v. And then a second v is going to be 1 to left, and 1, 2, 3, 4 up. So my vector then u plus 2v is that one. Yep. That's what we're doing if we're just sketching it geometrically. Sorry, that's kind of messy. If I should have zoomed in when I did it. It would have been easier for me. Were you okay with how I figured out that? Just by counting? Right. So vector u is 3, 1, so I go 1, 2, 3 over, and 1 up. So there's u. And then vector v is 1 to left and 4 up. So that's 1 to left, and then 1, 2, 3, 4 up. But it's 2u or 2v, so I'm going to do that again. So left 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, up. So my vector u plus v or u plus 2v is that vector when I connect them origin to the head there. Mm -hmm. You should have the picture labeled as I have it. Caitlin, are you happy with that then? Yes. Yeah, so it's really pretty straightforward, right? You're just kind of drawing what you what's written down. And you're just like counting left and right and up and down. Kendall? Uh, yeah, basically. So these are the same U's and V's here, right? Yeah, okay. 
this embedded really strangely. Uh, okay. So yeah, so if I was doing V minus U, so I draw my V, so that was three over and one up. No, the V was one to left and then four up, right? There's V. And then U was supposed to be one, three to the right and one up, right? So since it's negative, we're going to do the opposite. So we'll just go three to the left and then one down. Is U. So this guy is U minus V. Or alternatively, what you could do is you can draw uh, V was 1, 4. No, negative 1, 4. And then U was 3, 1. So you can do that. And then U minus V is, it was U minus V, right? Oh, V minus U. Okay. So that way. So here's what I'm seeing is if I add these two vectors, they've written, they're written head to tail, correct? Should give me this vector, right? So if I do u plus v minus u, that gives me v. So that's, you can think about it that way as well. It's the same picture, it's just been translated to a new location. Usually we like v minus u to be like the initial point to be the origin, but that picture is true as well. Uh, Kendall? Yeah, I know what you're saying. Okay, yeah, so you want to do, you said D is fine, and then I can answer Giselle's question while doing D. Does that work for everybody? So I'm going to just start by rewriting this in component form. Yep. So the I and the J just tell you the X and the Y for the components. So the I is for the X and the J is for the Y. Everybody okay there? Do you know, you remember why that is? The vector I is the vector one, zero, and the vector J is the vector zero, one. So it just easy peasy little arithmetic key. So there's that. Um, to get the direction now, this is a bad example, Gisela, because this one's really easy. Um, these are in the first quadrant, but we'll. So I, I would not describe it that way. Let's just sketch this one real quick. So this is that angle theta that we're looking for, right? Okay. So if the last axis you pass through on your way to the terminal side is the x-axis, then you're going to be adding, which is what happened here, right? The last axis we passed through before we get to the angle is the x-axis. Just So the x-axis, right? That's this one. Okay. Then we're going to be adding. In this case, it was 180 was the last part we 
passed, so we're going to do 180 plus the alpha. Okay. If, for example, we were here, if the last axis we pass through is on the y-axis, we're going to be doing subtraction. So the next piece is 180, and then we're going to subtract alpha from that. That's the, yeah. If you're using alpha directly, yes. I mean, you can do 90 and 270, but you have to do a little bit more arithmetic on what you're going to add or subtract from those things. Um, my suggestion is not to do it that way. The first quadrant. You don't have to do anything. Okay. So here, our angle theta is just going to be the tan inverse of opposite over adjacent. And that's just whatever the calculator spits out for us there. Oops. So 71.6 on this one. Over here, if we're doing this one, you're going to get that your alpha is equal to the tan inverse of uh, opposite over adjacent. So 69.4. So 180 plus 69.49.4. Kendall? That's kind of the convention, yeah, as we use. Uh, well, they're right next to each other in the alphabet. And they're letters that are not commonly used as some other variables. I always get Yeah. I mean, you I can just. Like you can just, yeah. You can just turn them into A's and B's or whatever if you need to. Like, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Who's next? What else did you guys want to talk about from this? Kendall? Sure. Most of the word problems, what we're doing, like once we figure out our vectors, is like the vector. For the for the ramp problems, yes. For like the ship problems, no. Like the navigation problems, you're just adding vectors. Are the word problems we found here going to be like similar to the numbers? Uh, they would be no more difficult than what you're seeing on the review. Similar in difficulty to what you're seeing on the review. Okay. Danny? So anything that I gave to you on the review? you're going to get on the exam. Yep. So you, you do need to know what the symbols mean and if there's any formulas that we kind of talked about or any other kind of things that we talked about that didn't make it on to that list of formulas at the end of the review, you're responsible for those. But I think we covered, you know, the big stuff there. Kendall? Um, when, again, No. Can you do you have an example? Which 
Okay, so so what problem, A? Oh, section 8.03. 8.03. And then in 8.04, it says that you know, Right. So it doesn't state that you know, the way that Gotcha. Okay. Great. So, so this is an easy answer. Okay. So the result of vector addition, vector subtraction, or scalar multiplication is always a vector. In problems here, in question one, all of those are addition, subtraction, or scalar multiplication of vectors, or a combination thereof. Right? All of these, the result is a vector. That's why we're asking for the answer in component form so somebody doesn't try to like draw a picture and say that's the that's the vector. Okay. If we go down to um, these problems, here we're not specific. The reason why we're not specific is that these problems are not vectors. These are just real numbers. The result of a dot product is always a real number. These ones, though, these are vectors. So we're looking at the projection of one vector onto another. So if this is like my vector v, and this guy's like my vector u. This is a vector w that's perpendicular to it. This is the projection of uh, u onto v. That's kind of what we're doing. So again, the projection is giving you a vector. because it was the dot product, was the last operation you took. So for example, if I did like u dot v uh, times uh, vector w, this is going to give me a vector. Because this gives me a scalar, and then a scalar times a vector is a vector as opposed to u plus v dot w. The result of this is a vector. And I know a vector dot a vector is a scalar. A real number, just like 7 or 18 or 5 thirds or whatever. So this, the dot product of these two is a scalar. And then so the, this becomes scalar multiplication, not a dot product then, even though it's the same symbol. Yeah, if, it's, if the dot is between two vectors, it's a dot product. If the dot is between a scalar and a vector, it's scalar multiplication. It's the same symbol, but we shouldn't be confused because like 3 times 3, 1 is obviously scalar multiplication, right? But if I have 3, 2, dot 5, negative 1, that's definitely a dot product because it's between two vectors. You won't be confused once you put the component forms in because it'll be really clear what it is that you're trying, you know, what the result should be. So this one This gives me a vector. And that one gives me a real number. Yep. And that's a good question, right? Making sure you have, you know, what kind of answer you should be expecting is important. And especially with this kind of the abuse notation there, where we're using the same symbol for scalar multiplication and a dot product, it's important that you're able to tell when you're supposed to be doing which. Um, in some texts, they're going to use like a bigger dot for scalar multiplication. 
Um, we did not do that here. And it's not always what they'll do, but if you go and take a course where you do a lot of vector mathematics, sometimes you'll see that. Um, Gisela, sure. Uh, for th these guys down here, I would prefer the exact answer, so as the fraction would be preferred, and you know your calculator can give you a fraction when you do the arithmetic, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I just wanted to double check to make sure, because that's a if you don't if you didn't know your calculator can do that where you've been, but give you an answer as a fraction. And you're like, oh yeah, I know that. So, but yeah, in general, if you can represent the answer with a fraction, we'd prefer that. Unless it's a like a story problem where certainly a decimal moment makes a heck of a lot more sense in most story problem contexts than a fraction does, right? Like how many pounds of force this is? Oh, it's 124 seventeenths pounds of force. It's like, no, that's stupid. Just give me the decimal. Right? That makes much more sense in the context of a story problem. Um, what else? Happy to do more or talk about more or clarify more things? Anything that you're interested in talking about right now? This time here is blocked off for you guys to ask questions. And if there's no more questions, you can simply work on things that you need to and ask questions as they rise. But, Danny? Yeah, do you have a preference? Okay, you good with the first one then? Okay. So when I read this problem, I read two vectors in the problem. It says Jackie wants to go sledding. She and the sled weigh a combined 108 pounds. If she's going sledding down a hill with a 38 degree angle of incline, how much force is she sliding down the hill? So what are the two vectors here, Danny? One is Jackie and the sled. Actually, I'm going to call this vector S so we don't get confused with the unit vector J rather than J for Jackie. That's going straight down. That's just gravity acting on her. Anytime you have like an object that has weight associated to it, the vector is always going to be pulling down due to gravity. Okay? So like in the previous example that we did at the start of class, there was the crate that weighed so much, we drew that vector straight down because of the gravity acting on it. And then you had a pull at an angle a certain amount. That's a vector at that angle because it's not like an object. It's like somebody pulling with a rope or whatever. Okay with that? And then I have my ramp. Now this is a little bit tricky because the ramp is going downhill. I'm going to draw it here. And it says its angle of incline is 38 degrees. So the angle of incline is going to be this angle relative to the horizontal. And by alternate interior angles, I know that that angle up there then is also 38 degrees. And I wanted that angle because the direction then of that vector is going to be what? Gisela. I'm just, we're doing a direction on where we have to add or subtract. Yep. Yeah. I use alpha when I draw mine. You can use whatever letter, though. You call them X if you want to. It's not a big deal. Yeah, that's okay. Danny, are you happy with that? So that's, uh, what's that, 220 or 322? So now I'm going to rewrite these two vectors. Um, I guess I'll call this vector R for ramp as components. So... 
I know the magnitude of vector r is 1. Well, I can call the magnitude of vector r 1 since we're not told how long the ramp is or anything else. We don't have any information about that. It doesn't matter. We can just set the ramp to have magnitude 1. So the magnet or the component form then is going to just be cosine of 322 comma sine 322. And my vector s, since it's pointing straight down, the x component is 0, the y component is negative, and it's just whatever the weight of the individual is. You could do the same thing if you wanted to, where here the theta is 270, and you'll get the same thing, because cosine of 270 is 0, and sine of 270 is negative 1. Or you can just think about it like in space. Either way of thinking about it is fine. You happy there? Okay. So what I need now is the magnitude of the projection of vector s onto vector r. So that's going to be s dot r over vector r times oops, the magnitude of vector r squared, sorry, times vector r. And this is just the same thing as the dot product. And that's only because that magnitude is 1. If the magnitude of r was not 1, you cannot shortcut it through this way. You'd actually have to do the whole thing out, but... Let's take advantage of that shortcut when we have it. So when we do this, 0 times cosine of 322 is just going to be 0. So we're going to have just negative 108 times sine of 322. And when I type that into my calculator, I get 66.49. that feel okay, Danny? You're welcome. And I think one of these at this kind of level is realistic to where I would, ex you know, could reasonably expect you to be able to do this sort of thing. One like story problem 10 is maybe more than I would expect you to be able to do on the test. But something like this I think is not unreasonable where you just have the two vectors and you even have the shortcut available to you where you don't have to do the whole projection. It just boils down to just being a dot product, really. So not so bad. Uh, others, anyone else? I'm going to let you guys work on whatever you kind of need to practice-wise. If you run into things that you have questions about, feel free to come on up and bother me. Uh, it's no bother at all. But otherwise, um, I think we should be okay for the Friday.